What's going on guys, Dan Watson, Learning Cameras. I've got the new Nikon D7500 right here, and when I first got this in, I mean, it was kind of a mixed bag on one, and we had some amazing new features that this camera offered, and we had the promise of the same image quality as the Nikon D500, which is such a great camera. On the other hand, we actually had some missing things that the Nikon D7200 had that were no longer in this camera. And while I'm still a little bit bothered about the lack of dual card slots, for example, I I'm beginning to accept some of those changes after using this camera for a while. So we're gonna take a look at this camera, quality features, as well as compare it to some of the other cameras at the end. And definitely check out the images that we're gonna show you right now. All of these images can be downloaded RAW plus JPEG for you. So you can throw in a Lightroom, edit them yourself, see the quality of this camera before you actually buy it. Take a look at the description below. You'll see some links to the camera as well as the lenses I use for this. So let's take a look at this camera and what it can offer. If you've ever used a Nikon camera, you're gonna feel pretty much at home right here. And that's for the most part a great thing. The buttons feel great. The quality of the camera is amazing. It feels like it's built like a tank and it's a little bit smaller and lighter than before, but not by much. And overall, it's just a, a good piece of hardware and it seems ready to take for anything from vacations up to even shooting sports and event photography, kind of. And one of those big missing features here is that lack of those dual memory card slots. and this is something that almost every professional photographer is gonna need in their camera, as well as just about anyone else. It's a great feature to have, and it's something that was pulled. You know, a year ago, the Nikon D7200 was actually Nikon's top quality APS-C camera, but now that's all changed. We now have a Nikon D500 that kind of fills that spot, and so Nikon has apparently felt the need to kind of lower this into the more the consumer market. And for the most part, I've been accepting of that change. The Nikon D500 is there for any anyone dealing with those more pro-like events that need those dual card slots. And then we have this a little bit less expensive for those of you who don't. And also, if we take a look at the other competition, like from the Canon 80D and the Nikon D6300, neither of those have some options. So for the most part, this is gonna be a quality piece of hardware and give you all the features in the body and the, the weather ceiling that you're gonna need from a camera like this. Now, one big new feature is gonna be the articulating touchscreen. And for the most part, it's really nice. 3.2 inches, it's gonna give you upwards, a little bit more limited on the downward mobility than some of your flip out screens, but overall it's really nice, feels good in the hand. The, the new touch screen also gives you access to some of the menu settings, which is kind of not something that we always get, so a much better touch screen implementation on this camera. The only beef that I really have on the hardware design is gonna be this mode dial. It's very difficult to change with one hand. There's a very limited area that you have to press to unlock and then slide this around. It's, it's very difficult for me to access. And then the only other little things is that the autofocus mechanism right here to control that takes just a little bit more attention than I would like when I'm operating the camera. And the only other thing is that I wish the white balance button was not over here with my playback controls, but maybe over here with my shooting controls. Kind of simplify the overall layout, but overall it is a much better camera. It is beefier. We have a nicer grip. It's really easy to handle for a long period of time. If you're somebody who's gonna be taking this out to some events or shooting some sports type stuff with it, it's a very comfortable camera to hold and overall the ergonomics are great. But let's talk quality for a second because the Nikon D7500 actually has fewer pixels than the 24 megapixel D7200 that we had before. So now we have a 20 megapixel sensor from the D500, but don't let that fool you. This thing has amazing dynamic range, great low light performance, and although it's lower resolution, it will likely give you better results than just about every other camera. Although with that lower resolution, I wouldn't be surprised to see some D7200 owners just kind of hesitate a little bit before picking one up. It's not all about resolution though, and you need to understand that the D7500 is gonna be one of the best quality APS-C cameras on the market today. Now, while we do have the same autofocus system from the Nikon D7200, it is a very good system. It has plenty of coverage, but you know, with only 15 cross-type points, it just really doesn't give you the upper hand compared to the competition. It's still very good though. Now, 
Something that is new is we do have a new processor and that's gonna help you get something like eight frames per second raw shooting up to 50 shots, which is actually really, really quick for a camera like this. It's also gonna give you 4K time lapse. It's gonna give you digital image stabilization. And we have a brand new metering system straight from the Nikon D500. So if you're someone who shoots auto ISO or aperture priority a lot, it's a great new metering system that you're gonna have available. The camera does use SnapBridge. It uses Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to be able to transfer your images. We don't have NFC anymore and overall, the process is a little bit slow and a little bit clunky. It doesn't work perfectly. It's not the best system out there for transferring, but it works and it's nice to see that we have most of those features on this camera. Now video and live view shooting is kind of a mixed bag for me. I mean, on one hand, it makes Canon look so stupid for sticking with 1080p while we have 4K recording on this one. We have headphones, we have mic inputs, we have 4K output to external recorders and even a neutral profile inside of this thing. It just has a lot of video features that make it look really nice. However, there are some issues that Nikon has and we really need to address them. Nikon is still using a contrast only detection system for their autofocus system. And while it is improved slightly, it just doesn't come close to what Canon's doing with the ADD and Sony's doing with their A6500. And so I really need this system to improve before I'm able to really recommend it. It's just not possible to get smooth autofocus results both in live view or when you're doing video, especially when you're doing video on any moving objects. It's good for your landscape shooters if you just wanted to pinpoint some uh, certain autofocus points and good light, but that's about the only thing that you're gonna be able to use with good results on that one. Also, while we do have 4K, it does come at the expense of an additional 1.5X crop, and so it kind of has more in common with micro four thirds cameras, where cameras like the, the Sony a6500 are actually able to oversample from that larger sensor and give us even more detail while still using the entire sensor. And so while this camera does have 4K and it does look pretty nice on a spec sheet, it just kind of left me wanting more when it came to actual video recording. However, the quality was good and it definitely throws Canon in the back of the pack. And overall, I would say that the, the 4K recording is nice to have, 1080p still works. It's just the autofocus system is kind of holding this thing back in live view and video shooting. Without question, the Nikon D7500 just really blows away something like the Canon 80D in just about every area except maybe autofocus performance in live view. And so if that's something you don't need that much of, this is really a camera that should be on the top of your list and for good reason. However, without some of the features like the dual card slots and Nikon is not making a battery grip like the, they did with the D7200 for these cameras, it really keeps it from separating itself like the D7200 used to from those cameras. If you're looking for a good quality camera, this is gonna be the top of your list for that one. If you are a little bit more concerned with live view autofocus and video performance, you should probably take a look at the A6500 from Sony or even the higher priced Fuji X-T2, which excel a little bit more in that area. However, if you're looking for a camera that just has amazing performance, solid autofocus, great handling, it's solid lens lineup, and overall it's just a beefy camera that's gonna last you from years to come. This is gonna be the camera you should consider. It just does almost everything well, and it's an extremely reliable camera with great ergonomics, and I know it's gonna last you quite a long time. But again, don't just take my results for it. Take a look at the images below, download those yourself. Uh, a lot of those were shot with the Tamron 18 to uh, 400 millimeter lens. So take a look at the review for that one. I'll post a link up here if you wanna see some of that performance. And then we've been shooting with this 18 to 140 millimeter Nikon lens as well. Please like, subscribe, whole lot more to come. Check out the Tamron review. Stay tuned for so much more. Thanks for watching guys, you guys are awesome.